Alright guys, what is going on? Oink here and I'm bringing you the latest in seasonal events from Gran Turismo 5. Sorry it's a little bit late, but I've been really busy, so... Um, this uh, seasonal event is the Classic Muscle Card Championship. Entry requirements are performance points of a maximum of 500, tyres maximum sport medium, it has to be 1980s or earlier, and from the United States. And those are the... Um, uh, the requirements, the tracks, we've got a Daytona Super Speedway, uh, Cape Ring, Outer Ring, Laguna Seca, a Madrid Circuit, and an, an Eiffel Custom. Um, obviously you've got the two US tracks, I guess they try and theme these a little bit to whatever the event is. Uh, anyway, the car that I've chosen to use for this one is the uh, Chevrolet uh, Stingray, I believe it is, convertible though. This is the convertible, so it's the C3 convertible. Uh, from 1969. Uh, this is actually a very good car given how old it is and uh, I use this for a lot of these older events because it is really really good car. So the settings then, well obviously the sports medium that's the maximum tyres you can use. Suspension I left at stock, you don't really need to customise it for this, it's not a particularly tough event. Fully upgraded the drivetrain, the clutch, that sort of stuff. Transmission, have got the fully adjustable one, we're going to be mixing that around for the different tracks. And then uh, supercharged it and various upgrades like the exhaust and intakes and stuff, basically just to get it up to the 500 performance points. Uh, once you get it to 500 you obviously have to tone it down on the power limiter as the car, you know, the engine gets more powerful. So it started off at 500 and I slowly turned it down as the power went up. So basically just tune it to 500 and, and you know, slowly down tune it with the power limiter. Uh, the prize car for this event is the Chevrolet Camaro Le Mans race car. Uh, it's not the prettiest of cars, it's this big green looking thing. It's uh, not my favourite, but there you go. It's not a bad car, relatively rare in the used car dealership. Um, so, track number one then, Daytona Super Speedway, there really isn't much to say about this, as long as you put your transmission, I've set this up to about 155 or something like that, um, just slipstream where you can, obviously don't crash, <laughs> I mean, like I said, there really isn't much to this, uh, it shouldn't be too challenging, the guy in first of mine uh, actually got quite a little lead on me, uh, overtake him there on the last lap, as we're overlapping the... Uh, slower cars there, but that was quite late on, uh, sorry, early on on the last lap, so no challenge there really. Should be very simple, just make sure you've got all uh, driving aids turned off. Um, Cape Ring then is, the, the, the actual course is a little tougher, one of the ones that um, hopefully you will have learnt a bit about over your, over playing Gran Turismo. Um, the settings are important for this one, for, particularly for that big uh, circular like roundabout type thing. I, I go with a um, all settings turned off except for I think I had skid recovery on just to make life easier, and that really helps you around the corners. Um, there's a few areas where you get dips and bumps like these. Make sure you just brake nice and early on those because obviously the suspension is a little bit squishy on these old cars, and it can cause you to basically oversteer as you put power down into the next corner. So on the little uh, the little lumps, make sure you're braking nice and early. Keep the car at a controllable speed. Um, for Laguna Seca, then this is where you really notice the oversteer that you get with this car, and you can kind of use it to your advantage. Just um, make sure you put a lot of power down into the dip, so you get lots of speed coming out of the turns. Uh, feel free to use the um, the darker brown sections off the corners there, because whilst this is covered in sand. Just on the edges, you see a slightly darker colour there, which is like um, I don't know, it's like compacted sand. I don't really know what it is, but it handles pretty nicely. So if you find yourself just understeering a little bit or needing a little bit inside the corner, uh, then that's always something you can use. Make sure you keep the car nice and slow through that top section. There, it is uh, a risky one. You can often spin out with a bit too much accelerator. And uh, like I said, just feel free to use the insides of the corners and the outside of the corners if you need to. Again, this car does have a lot of oversteer as you can see there, so try to control that and uh, keep it tamed as you can see there. If you go on the brown stuff, it really doesn't slow you down that too much and uh, take first place there. Uh, track number four then is the R Madrid circuit now. Uh, it's pretty tight around here and you want to kind of... Um, Basically, keep keep it nice and smooth. That's the idea here. Don't be too aggressive because if you clip the sides, it can you know turn you face in the wall and you have to reverse out and stuff like that, and it's just a nightmare. So try and avoid clipping the walls on this one because that will really 
ruin your day. Um, like I said, nice smooth lines. This last like little uh, hairpin here, really tough. Make sure you break really, really early on this one. I actually find the visibility on that corner is really hard to actually see where the corner is coming up. Um, I'll show you another clip in a second of uh, what you might want to do. There's a co nice corner just there where you just put the power in nice and early and sort of slide it through the corner. As you can see here, I break way too late. I kind of can't see where the corner is and uh, just, yeah, like I said, break too late. If that happens, you can recover it. Just slam on the handbrake, put the car into a slide so you go 90 degrees and just hit against the side of the wall there. That way you can get away quickly. You don't end up face on against the wall and having to reverse. It's a little bit cheap, but if you have to do that, then that is a, a little escape mechanism that I found up there as uh, I break too late. So final course then, this is the Eiffel track, again they've made one of these insanely wide tracks, like I said in previous previous ones of this, it's almost impossible to come off the track because it's so so wide you just have like unlimited amount of space. So again a good fun track to do because you can keep your speed, your average speed relatively high and lots of nice smooth flowing lines. Again this car handles, I really like the way this car handles, in my, I mean it's just maybe the way I drive but uh, Watch out for that very last corner there, you get the slight camber away from the turn and that does induce some understeer, so just watch out, make sure you turn in nice and early, I'll actually show you some of that later, uh, don't get that quite right. Lots of these big sweeping turns, make sure again turning in early, um, accelerate through the corner as best as you can. This little one here you get a hill and a blind corner down to the left, you want to enter that one really slow, if you have too much power the suspension will just bring you up. Then you've got no braking or turning power and you'll actually just fly straight over the other side of the corner and crash into the wall. Uh, the example here, if you don't turn quite early enough on that last corner, you literally get like 100% understeer and you don't go anywhere. So make sure you turn in nice and early for that very last corner, otherwise, again, you'll come off the side there. Anyway, should be a relatively straightforward seasonal events. Just thought I'd break it down for you and uh, show you what I've done with it. Now, I hope you guys enjoy this video and I'll catch you guys soon.